okay so yesterday night a very good question was asked to us on our youtube channel and the question was asked by keur shah uh, this member asks sir we i had a doubt when unfractionated heparin inhibits factor 10 and 2 which is of the common pathway so why we use aptt to monitor heparin as it measures the intrinsic pathway so it's a very important question means in unfractionated whenever we are giving unfractionated heparin to somebody and we are monitoring aptt but unfractionated heparin inhibits uh, factor 2 which is prothrombin and uh, factor 10a both are part of Uh, common pathway so why is that we only use aptt to monitor unfractionated heparin and for lmwh we don't monitor so let's try to understand so we are going a little bit back into the pathways of coagulation so we have two pathways so i am trying to simplify as much as possible we'll exclude all the complicated things so that we understand this concept so we have two pathways one is intrinsic one and other one is extrinsic one so the intrinsic pathway the first factor to get activated is factor 12 this gets activated and this activates factor 11 when this gets activated it activates factor 9 and this 9 activates factor 10 and 10 gets activated into 10a and 10a activates factor 2 which is prothrombin thrombin and prothrombin uh, gets activated into thrombin and thrombin then converts fibrinogen fibrinogen to fibrin ultimately we want to uh, make fibrin strand this 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 is the plug which is formed at the blood vessel so th from here it is the common pathway above this is your intrinsic pathway now in extrinsic pathway the factor uh, first get activated in tissue factor tissue factor activates factor 7 and when factor 7 gets means all these factor uh, uh, convert into 12 to 12a then 12a activates 9 it gets converted into uh, nine, uh, sorry 11 activated then it's activates 9 and 9 gets converted into activated 9 and then activate so for the simplicity i am mentioning only the factors name so tissue factor activates in extrinsic then factor 7 and this activates factor 10 so up till now it is clear that this is your intrinsic pathway and this is your extrinsic pathway now what unfractionated heparin do before uh, understanding that you need to understand one more thing when your this thrombin gets activated this this is the only step which is required which is important when your thrombin gets activated this thrombin activates three more factors those factors are factor 5 factor 8 and factor 13 which is von willebrand factor so this von willebrand factor what this do it's it uh, So the fibrin strands are like this. What one valuant factors do is it makes cross links between this, so it creates a mesh. So it gives stability to the fibrin plug. So that's why if the patient is one valuant factor deficient, the fibrin plug will not be that strong and it, it manifests as uh, bleeding. So you understood this? Thrombin activates factor thirteen also. Thrombin also activates factor five and factor eight. This factor five is required to work for factor ten. It acts a co. It acts a act as a cofactor for factor ten. You can remember ten and five by the uh, half and double of this. Factor eight is important for factor nine. So nine and eight are both side by side. So that's why it is important. And because of this thrombin activating factor nine and factor eight. Uh, and factor 30 uh, for factor 8 and factor 5 this intrinsic pathway gets activated it gets multi it gets boost up so again i am revising this is your intrinsic pathway this is your extrinsic pathway the common endpoint is factor 
factor 10A get converted into uh, 10A. This converts prothrombin into thrombin and thrombin converts fibrinogen into fibrin. But other than that, fibrin also activates factor 8 which is important for factor 9 and factor 5 which is important for factor 10. Now here comes the most important thing, unfractionated heparin and LMWH. Unfractionated heparin blocks, uh, activates antithrombin. Unfractionated uh, heparin acts by antithrombin. It activates the antithrombin. So antithrombin, uh, what does? It blocks factor 10 and it blocks thrombin. Going? Because unfractionated heparin has both high, it's a high molecular weight heparin and it, all, it has long chains which is required to block thrombin also. The small chains can active, inactivate factor 10 but the long chains are required to activate thrombin. So when unfractionated heparin blocks 10A, it blocks the common pathway but when it blocks the thrombin, your indirectly your intrinsic pathway gets blocked. While low molecular weight heparin only blocks 10A. So, in 10A, the common pathway gets blocked. But in unfractionate heparin, because of the blockage of thrombin, your intrinsic pathway also gets blocked. That's why APTT is used as a measure to know the activity of unfractionate heparin. I'm, I'm able to explain. Unfractionated heparin has uh, long chains, and long chains are required to block thrombin activity. This thrombin activity, though um, uh, this uh, thrombin activity when gets blocked, it helps in uh, formation of clots as well as it blocks your intrinsic pathway. So that's why APTT is used to measure unfractionated heparin activity. While low molecular weight heparin all only has short chains, and it can only block factor 10. So it doesn't affect thrombin. So it affects uh, it affects factor 10a and by 10a thrombin doesn't get in, in um, uh, means it gets inhibited indirectly but direct inhibition of thrombin is via unfractionate heparin so this is this has a more potential activity on anticoagulation than in lmwh so it is only a factor 10a inhibitor lmwh whatever low molecular weight heparin you are giving it is only factor 10A inhibitor, while unfractionated heparin is both 10A inhibitor and thrombin inhibitor. And th by blocking thrombin, it affects the intrinsic pathway. That's why APTT is required to monitor the APT, uh, activity of uh, unfractionated heparin because if you don't monitor that, it can manifest in bleeding and bleeding rate, rate get increased too much. I am able to explain any doubt. Any doubt regarding this, why unfractionated heparin and low molecular heparin are given and un why unfractionated heparin we need to monitor APTT and LMWH we don't monitor APTT. It, is, it only affects factor 10 and 10A gets blocked while unfractionated heparin blocks 10A and thrombin via antithrombin activity because it has long chains. A long, longer uh, molecule and long chains are required to block thrombin, while LMWH doesn't have long chains, it only blocks them. Clear? Okay, thank you for asking this question. Uh, do read more about this.